Now everyone in life wants to be happy, but sometimes it's just hard. We experience problems on a daily basis that can push us to our limits. That's why how we choose to respond to problems can have a big impact over time. I personally found myself always doing quick fixes to problems which worked in the short term but never lasted. Over time, I've become better though at stepping back to see the big picture. And eventually, I began to see patterns to my problems and found solutions that actually worked. In this video, I'm going to share with you the importance of finding the root cause to problems. So, let's do it! Now I want to start off with an example. And recently, because I had my second son, I'm going to give you a baby example. Now imagine I had an unhappy baby who is crying because he's tired and needs a nap. Now if I didn't realize the baby was tired, I may try giving him his favorite toy, feeding him, holding him, or showing him his favorite show. All of these solutions may stop him crying for a moment, but eventually he would just keep crying because, well, he's tired and grumpy. The root cause or real problem to his crying is that he is tired. Similarly, if we don't find the root cause or the true cause to our problems and unhappiness, just like a baby, we'll continually experience our problems. A good example of this happened when I was playing soccer one summer night. Because of the heat, I brought a cooler with ice and water bottles. After the game, I dumped the melted ice out and threw the cooler in the back of my car. I was so exhausted by the game that when I got home, I just left the cooler in my trunk. Now the next day, I opened the trunk and found out that there was still some water in the cooler which had leaked out onto the floor. But I was already late to where I was going, so I closed the trunk and ignored the problem. I eventually forgot about it for a few days until the car began to have a nasty smell. Now I opened the trunk again to find the hot summer nights had turned the wet floor into mold. So I looked up on Google to see how to fix it and it looked pretty simple. Sprinkle some baking soda onto the mold which will absorb any moisture and smell, then vacuum it up. Now I didn't want anyone to know what a dumb thing I had done. So early in the morning, I dump a ton of baking soda um, in there to make sure it gets all soaked up. And late that night in my closed garage, there I was with my head inside my trunk, vacuuming it out. Now halfway into it, it kind of got hard to breathe, but I was so angry, I didn't really think about it. I just powered through and focused on finishing it as fast as I could. And after I finished, I had successfully got rid of all the mold. But as I lifted my head up, I realized I had another huge problem. The mold was gone, but there was no bag in the vacuum cleaner. I looked around to see my entire garage and other cars in it, caked in baking soda with a thick fog of powder everywhere. Now because there was no bag in the vacuum, the baking soda was sucked up and shot out the other end of the vacuum into the air as powder. So then I had to spend the next couple hours or two with a leaf blower fixing my new problem. And I'm just furious. Now, often we experience problems like this and we solve it by making a goal or a commitment to act a certain way. So it never happens again. Like after my experience, I decided to never leave a water cooler in my trunk in the summer ever again. But often just as we solve one problem, another problem happens, which we have to solve. Like, oh, I ran out of money or, oh, I got into an argument with a friend or dang, I just failed an exam. And sooner or later, we find ourselves constantly moving from one problem to the next in a continuous state of unhappiness. Looking at my life, I feel this often happens because just like the baby example, I'm providing quick solutions, but I'm not fixing the root problem. When these specific problems happen to us, they seem to be totally unrelated. I mean, how could the trunk of my car have anything to do with me running out of money? getting a bad grade in a class, or even having an argument. But oddly enough, I found that there is often a root cause to my problems in life. For example, a large part of why these things happened was because I didn't listen to other people. 
If I had listened to my parents who always tell me to put things away after I use them, I would never have a moldy trunk. If I looked at my reviews or other reviews from other people, I wouldn't buy so many things I didn't need. If I asked teachers for help, I would have understood the exam. And if I took the time to understand other people's point of view and what they are telling me, I wouldn't get into so many arguments. After looking at the things that cause me to be unhappy, there are definitely patterns and trends to my problems. By finding these root causes to my problems, I could work on solutions that often solved a lot of problems all at once and prevented a lot of problems all at once. Now, like I always say, this isn't something that will just happen. We need to consciously focus on doing something different. So the next time you have a problem, I want you to remember that your immediate reaction to fix it will most likely not be the best solution. So instead of immediately reacting to a problem, take a moment and try doing the following things. The first thing, calm yourself. Negative emotions often cloud your mind. So in the moment when you're angry or super sad or super you know, nervous or whatever it is, you're probably not gonna come up with a good solution. So take the time just to calm down. Or it could even take a couple of days. Next, when you're calm, take a moment to ask yourself the question again. Why might this have happened to me? And what could I have done differently? Now you'll be amazed at how different a response you may give when you're in a calm state. Lastly, and most importantly, go find a mentor that you look up to, like a parent, a teacher, or a coach, and ask them the same question. You know, they're a lot older than you, they've probably gone through a lot of the same things, so they'll be able to look at how you're seeing things and maybe adjust things or give you new insight that will help you identify what's really causing you to be unhappy. But the more times you go through this process, and the more times you encounter problems in practice, the better and better you'll get at being able to identify what's really making you unhappy, what's really causing you these problems in life. And it's not an easy thing, so it'll take practice, but remember, it takes time. So be patient with yourself, and good luck in all your attempts to improve. Until next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to our channel for more content. We'll see you next time.